Hello everybody, today I'm going to be talking about Xeotic Pulses and their uses in Minecraft Bedrock Edition. Now the reason for which I'm making this video is because recently I have been seeing a lot of these. Now not specifically this one, this is my version of it. But they're calling them Xeotic Sugarcane Farms even though all they're doing is updating this. Now I've seen some people say that Bedrock Edition doesn't get Xeotic Pulses and all that fun stuff. Now, all that fun stuff is partially true, but we do get zero tick pulses. The thing, people that say that we don't get zero tick pulses are unaware of how useful they can actually be in redstone circuits. So over here, I have simple idea, right? You want, to, at one point, you want to activate both of these, right? While activating the repeaters. But if, what if at one point you want to activate only these without activating the repeater? Well, do your tick pulses to the rescue. As you just saw right there, these pistons activated without ever having these redstone repeaters activate. And that is because your tick pulses will only activate, well, obviously, redstone dust. TNT, sticky pistons, pistons, redstone lamps, trapdoors of any kind, droppers, and dispensers. Now, they will not interact with redstone torches, redstone repeaters, comparators, or observers. So, we could also have a similar situation where you have something like this, right? Well, if we turn this on normally, or just give a normal one tick pulse, everything will activate. But with a zero tick pulse, only these will activate. And that is something quite useful if you want to keep certain redstone builds ultra compact. For example, over here in this piston extender that I used in my 4x4 seamless glass door, I need to activate this redstone line without activating this repeater. Now the first time around I activate the repeater and the second time I don't. How do I do this, you ask? Well, with zero tick pulses. I know what you're thinking, I could have just simply done this. Well, like, maybe, I don't know. But it would have made the wiring a lot more complicated. So, over here, I have a zero tick pulse generator. Now, I actually discovered this one by accident while making monostable circuit, and I forgot to add some delay. But I realized that, oh, this is a neat zero tick pulse generator, because before, I, what I did was this. And this has an observer which can be unreliable, and and this one doesn't. So essentially, what in Bedrock Edition, pistons have a slight delay for activating. They don't activate immediately, um, so that's why this works. So you have essentially this repeater powering the select, which will activate this, and moments afterwards, the piston will extend, causing the redstone line to turn off very fast. In fact, it'll turn on and off so fast that it's a zero tick pulse. And in case you haven't, and in case you are unaware of what zero tick pulses are, it's when you power and unpower redstone in the same game tick. Game tick is 0 0.5 seconds. So with this setup, I can demonstrate. I can easily demonstrate that zero tick pulses do not act interact with repeaters, observers, or comparators. In fact, let's do one more that is connected to a redstone torch. So, I'll do this. As you can see, that piston is still the only one to activate. And I then realized, well, why is that? That it's specifically these components. And well, these, in case you haven't realized, these components are the ones that have at least one redstone tick of delay to work. And that's why it's specifically these components that will not be able to interact with the zero tick pulses. Now, I hope you find this video useful, and I will see you all next time. Bye!